I'm working on a custom order. This is going to be a feather tray. Got my little mold here. Um, this was actually ordered by one of my TikTok followers, Audrey, um, and she ordered this for someone that she follows on TikTok as a gift. Um, that is Shoe Lover 99. Um, Shoe Lover 99 lost her son, and feathers are very meaningful to her as is the color blue. So I will be making this in different shades of blue. Um, I've already mixed up my resin. Um, this particular mold takes three ounces, and today I'm using the Naked Fusion Artist Resin. And the blues that I'm using, this is a Color Obsession Mica Powder in the color Steel Blue. And this is, I just love this color. <laughs> Um, I'm using Just Resin. This is a pigment paste in navy. And for glitter, I've got the Something Blue from Glitter Makes It. This is a really nice kind of a baby blue, steel blue. Goes really nice with this mica. And then a little bit of white, as always using the Mix All White. So... With this mold, um, there are some challenges getting the resin all the way down into the stem and even all the way down to the bottom of the mold because it is pretty thin. You know, there's not a lot of room to pour down in there. So air gets trapped pretty easily. So I'm going to show you how I handle that, um, kind of my technique for, <laughs> for making sure the resin gets all the way down and there's no bubbles around the edges. But first, I need to mix up my colors. So I am going to keep some of it clear, I guess I don't need four cups, um, for the glitter. So I'm going to mix up these other three colors in these three little cups here. And I have three ounces total, so I'm going to do maybe about a half an ounce for the two blues. And then... A little bit less for the white. I want to have most of my color be clear. And that's because I'm going to pour the clear in first and it's going to go down to the rim. But then as I pour the colors in on top, they're going to all kind of flow down and mix and sink through the clear. And just create a really cool edge effect. So I have about, looks like about an ounce and a half left in the cup here. So I'm just gonna wipe off this edge. Okay, so let's see here. We'll start with the mica. You don't need a ton. I'm just gonna take a little, little bit on the end of my stir stick here. Mica powder, you always wanna mix very, very thoroughly. That's why I start with the mica. So usually the first colors I mix up are mica because if you don't mix it all the way, if it's not thoroughly mixed, then some of the mica powder will float up to the top. So then as it's sitting here while you're mixing up the other colors, it'll float up and then you can check it and stir it one more time if you need to before you pour. So I'm just getting that mixed in. All right, now the paste. <clears throat> so pigment pastes, I like to always stir them before I scoop any out just because a lot of times the pigment will sink down to the bottom because it's a powder. A lot of these are made with powder pigments. Um, so I just like to mix it up first just to make sure I'm getting good amount of saturation. All right, let's scrape that off and then I'm gonna grab about as much as I had of the mica powder My little mess here. Be tracking blue everywhere. <laughs> now, when you use your uh, stick to scoop pigment paste out of the container, if you need more paste, wipe your stick off really good before you dip it back in there. You don't want to transfer any of your resin into the paste. And then as I'm mixing, I also like to scrape the stick because that pigment paste 
is on the stick because that's what you scooped it out with. And if you don't wipe it off, it's going to leave some unmixed resin in there. All right, and now the white, this isn't gonna take a lot. This is a very strong white. Um, so I just put a couple drops in there. With the mix all, my go-to recipe for a uh, nice opaque white is 10 drops per ounce. But my bottle, I have the big bottle so the drops don't come out quite as good as they do in the little bottle. So if you have the little bottle, 10 drops per ounce. If you have the big bottle, um, it's kind of a guessing game. Okay, so that's nice and solid. All right, and then for my glitter. And I have um, discount codes for the mix all and for the glitter. I'll put those in the description. So normally, if you watch my channel, for most of my projects when I use glitter, I tend to make the mix pretty thick. This time around, I am actually going more on the thinner side because I don't want to have trouble pouring this. So it is actually a little thicker than I would have liked. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't have added that little second scoop in there, but that's okay. It does make it a little more challenging to pour in a mold like this where it's just really, really thin. So I'm gonna start with the glitter. And I'm gonna set my stick down and I'm just gonna hold this mold open a little bit as I pour. So I'm just gonna kind of let it do its thing and slide, slide down the mold. And this takes a little bit extra time. You know, if you just pour it in the mold, it's much faster. And that's what we'll be doing with the other colors. But um, you, you can end up with air bubbles, especially if you've got glitter mixed in. Glitter tends to trap air. I just wanna make sure I have enough left to do the other side. And then I'm going to use my little dotting tool if I need to, to just kind of slide this around and make sure it's all the way down to the edge. Okay, so now the tough part. So getting the resin all the way down in here, especially with glitter in it, especially when it's this thick, is a bit challenging. So I'm gonna spread this open again, just like I did the rest of it. And this is where this little dotting tool comes in very handy because you can see right here, there's an air bubble trapped in there. So I need to pop that air bubble and push the resin down in there. And I'm kind of twirling and spinning like this in there to encourage that air bubble to just release. And if you squeeze it, you can see, or I can see, I don't know if you can see, there is still a little bit of air trap down in there. So I'm just gonna keep working that resin into the stem. Okay, so now I can see that the stem is nice and full. 
don't see any air bubbles trapped in there. So I am now just going to go around the edges. Let me just clean up a little bit so I don't get resin everywhere. All right, so then I'm just gonna go around and pinch these edges a little bit, and you can actually kind of feel the air bubbles when they push out. So I didn't have too many stuck in there, which is good. All right, so now to pour the other colors. All right, so I'm gonna start with this mica powder. And the paste. Sometimes I'll leave a little clear. This time I mixed it all with my glitter. Sometimes I will leave a little clear to pour after the colors. Just, you know, it just helps everything mix happily. I like doing this with multiple colors. So I'm just lifting up the sides to encourage everything to blend. And then I'm going to go back in the rest of my color. And then I'm just gonna top it off with the last of the glitter. So I'm just going to let that cure. It is going to mix. Um, gravity is going to pull some of the colors down. They're going to blend. And then um, I will come back tomorrow in 24 hours and show you how I put my logo on. So I will see you tomorrow for the next part. All right. Nice and cured. Can't wait to demold. But first, got to put my logo on. And I have another piece here. I also need to put a logo in it. So I'm going to do them both right now. Um, what I do for this process is really simple. Um, I have had my logo put on these little silver discs. They're very thin. Um, and I've got a few other methods that I use. I also have, these are, um, polyvinyl stickers. So they're completely waterproof. Um, you know, they're safe to put underneath resin and I've got those in different shapes and sizes but I don't have any that will fit in this heart or on here I do have horizontal ones but they're paper so I don't use those for this so this is what I do is I just basically embed my little logo in some clear resin for this though instead of my usual resin I like to use speedy PD. Um, I use the ultra fast set and this is completely rock hard cured in four hours. Um, it's only got a 15 minute mix or uh, working time. So you have to mix and pour right away. It is really, really thick. I mean, really thick. And it also gets extremely bubbly because it's so thick. Um, but once you pour it and you hit it with your heat gun or your torch a few times, the bubbles rise really quickly and really easily in a super thin pour. And this is made for thin pours. You do not wanna make um, even something this deep, this little love sign. This is probably thicker than a quarter inch, not quite a half inch. Um, and something like this, even though it's fairly thin, the volume of resin in here is a lot. So I wouldn't use this kind of resin 
for pores like this. But for top coating things, I love um, using this to top coat my tumblers. I top coat a lot of my, um, you know, when I pour on a breadboard or pour on my slate trays, things like that, I'll top coat with this. So this is an awesome top coat um, resin. So I'm going to mix up my resin um, and then I will be back to pour it. All right, I have my resin mixed up and I don't know if you can quite see that, but there's just a ton of bubbles in it. <laughs> but like I said, that'll be okay once I pour it out because it's going in a really thin layer. And you can see just how thick it is. Um, I've never worked with a resin as thick as this one, but I really do like it. All right, so I'm just pouring enough in here. I don't want to overfill it. Oops. I think this actually stuck. Yep, <laughs> that stuck. I put it down, set it down before this was completely cured, and it just stuck right in there. A little sloppy there, but no big deal. I'll clean that up. I was checking to see if this one, I'll give it just a little bit more. It is a little harder to top things off with a resin this thick too, because it doesn't just immediately spread out and you can see right you know where it is <laughs> so okay all right so now i'm going to just put it with the heat gun and now that it's spread out i can see it is a little a little over full so i'm just gonna take a little spoon pull some of this back out Okay, so I'm going to put my little piece in here. And I usually do wait until after I pour to drop it in. Just because I don't want it floating around, floating away on me. And I'm just going to push it all the way down, make sure it's completely covered. Now, you I don't know if you can see, but right here is a spot where there is no resin the blue you know my first pour it it was there wasn't quite enough resin and it looks like this is a high spot and it didn't cover so I have a couple drips left from making this um so I'm just going to put those down and slide them over top of this little gap and I don't even think you'll be able to see them from the other side I think they'll blend in pretty good I just didn't want to leave a clear spot there because then, of course, you know, when you set it down, you'll be able to see through it in just that one little spot. I thought that might be kind of weird. So, all right. Okay, so these look like they're filled pretty good. I'm going to torch them one more time. All right, guys, I'm going to let these cure, and then we'll demold tomorrow. I'm super excited to see what these look like. So, I will be back tomorrow. All right, so it's actually not tomorrow. It's about three hours after I put the, um, the top coat on. And as you can see, it's nice and hard. So I'm going to go ahead and demold this baby. Can't wait to see what it looks like. It's always tough to get stuff out of this mold. You could um, put some water, like open this up and put a little bit of water down in there when you have things that are hard to demold. But this one, if you stretch it enough, all right. Ooh, oops, sorry. <laughs> oh, that's so pretty. All right, let me put it down and bring my camera in a little closer. turned out so cool and you can see there's no air bubbles on the edges which is to me the <laughs> the biggest 
challenge with this type of mold. So, all right, there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please consider subscribing. I really appreciate it. Also, sharing my videos, leaving comments and likes helps the algorithm. And YouTube will share this then and spread the word to other people. <laughs> so, all right. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you watching. And I'll see you next time. Take care. Mm -hmm.